Thousands of travelers remain stranded at airports across the nation, but President Biden's $1.7 trillion spending bill scored a ticket to St. Croix for the president to sign from his tropical paradise. Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the House Judiciary Committee, joins me now. Congressman, good morning to you. You know, President Biden does paint morning. himself as a man of the people, but this seems like a, a uniquely elitist move to have this spending bill flown down to him so that he can sign it while he's on vacation. What do you make of this? Yeah, not many people of America can afford to go to St. Croix for vacation. And oh, by the way, he's vacationing at a donor's home. I don't know how the ethics rules allow presidents to do that. It wouldn't allow a member of Congress to do that. Joe Biden has been on vacation more than any other president in recent history. So it's no surprising that as we face the crisis at the southern border, the crisis that the Northeast and the Midwest face with all the blizzards uh, and the, the shutdowns and all the things that happen because of all those storms, that he's vacationing in St. Croix. It just shows that he doesn't care truly about the American people, despite the fact that they say that they care. Nothing in the spending bill um, uh, having to do with border security. What can Republicans do when they take over the House? And is legislation on the table? Oh, there is there is money in there for border security, just not our border security. To secure the border of Jordan and Egypt and Tunisia and Oman, there's $400 million in that $1.7 trillion to secure their border, but actually language that says that no money that is appropriated to DHS can be used to secure our border. How backwards and upside down is our country right now when we're going to send millions of dollars to other countries to secure their borders, and we're not going to secure our own border when we had record fentanyl deaths in our country that we know is coming through the southern bo southern border, uh, all of these different crimes committed by these individuals, and almost five million illegal immigrants come into our country. It's time now that the House, when we get into Republican hands on Tuesday, uh, set this straight, shut the border down, do what we can to perform oversight on Mayorkas and the administration to show the American people that every single day they've been intentionally and willfully violating federal law on the border. There is a speakership race taking place in the House right now. Votes are going to be on Tuesday, on January 3rd. Who's going to be the next House Speaker? I think Kevin McCarthy gets there. Look, the overwhelming majority of the conference voted for Kevin McCarthy in our in our race internally, 188 to 31. It's time for us to unite around our speaker. Uh, if it's multiple votes and we're not able to get to the votes because of five or six holdouts, I, I, I know there's five for sure yeah. that have publicly said it. It doesn't look good to the American people that on the very first day Republicans take the majority, that we can't even rally behind uh, the person who won our conference vote, vote by an overwhelming majority of votes. Yeah, Andy Biggs was on Fox News yesterday. He said under no circumstances would he vote for Kevin McCarthy. What's the rub there, and does that concern you? You know, I don't know the history there, but, but Leader McCarthy can lose four votes um, so he doesn't have to vote for him. It's that fifth person that has said publicly that they won't. And I know that over the last couple of weeks, uh, Speaker McCarthy, Speaker Designate McCarthy has made numerous concessions to them in the Freedom Caucus on the rules changes that they wanted to make, despite the fact that the conference didn't uh, vote for those rules. Uh, so I think uh, Leader McCarthy's doing everything he can to try to acquiesce to some of the demands that they've had, and hopefully Tuesday goes smooth, uh, despite the fact that he's going to have a couple no votes on our side. You know, there is an interesting poll that was released yesterday, Suffolk University, USA Today, and it shows that 65 percent of people feel the country is headed in the wrong direction, and 41 percent uh, strongly disapprove of President Biden. And yet the Biden administration feels like there's wind at their back right now because of the midterm elections. So where do you think the American people stand really? Well, I know where my district is, and I know where Floridians stand, and that's not with Joe Biden's policies, which is why people are flocking here from all over the country, because we have Republican rule here in the great state of Florida. Uh, so I would say the majority of Americans, just like those polls show, say they don't support the policies of this administration and, and, and full Democratic rule that we've had for the last two years, which is why the American people put us in charge of the House, and we need to go up there next Tuesday and start doing the things that the American people want us to do, like shutting down the board. Order, providing oversight on the administration and doing the things that will bring inflation down, uh, energy independence back to the United States, the things the American people want us to do. Congressman Stubbe, thank you so much for joining us. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Great to see you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.